Hello and welcome to another episode of Zero to Game. In this episode, I'm going to be covering fly cameras since they are a pretty important part of doing things in game engines and most editors will have a fly camera as a method of navigating around. And since Bevy doesn't have an editor, you will likely be building your own fly camera or using one of the crates provided by other people that have made fly cameras. The important thing with a fly camera is to understand how it works so that if the functionality that it provides to you isn't adequate from like a pre-provided crate, you can make your own and edit it how you like. This episode will assume you have the basic knowledge from the first episode of Zero to Pong game, which was making the Pong. So this includes things like initializing your project, adding all of Bevy to your Tommel, setting up your main function and all that. So the first thing we're gonna set up for our fly camera is our binding. This is not necessary for most applications where you're using it just as a debug camera, since you can just hard code the bindings to what you'd like. But it can be useful to have these as a variable that can be set by you, or if you're creating, say, a crate, for other people to use so they can change the settings to what they like. Or maybe you will change the settings in the future and not have to worry about finding all the places where you've hard coded values. In this case, we will use a forward, backwards, left, right, up and down key code to control the basic navigation of the camera. I've got a boost key which will make the camera move faster when you're being pressed so that you can move quickly. The boost factor which is the speed at which the camera is sped up when the key is held. The toggle grab key which is the key that you press so that the cursor is no longer locked if you need to be able to move the mouse off the screen. Mouse sensitivity which is how much the camera will ro rotate with any single movement of the mouse. And then the base speed of the camera this is just the amount of movement we will move in one second. As you can see, I've assigned pretty standard default values to this of W, S, A, and D for the movement keys, space to go up, left control to go down. Holding shift will make you move faster. Escape will toggle the cursor grab. Mouse sensitivity is a really small number since you will get a value of one for every pixel you move. And since there is only two pi radians in a circle, that will result in the camera doing a flip every six pixels moved approximately. So this number needs to basically be really small or otherwise it's really, really hard to navigate with the camera. A base speed of 10, this may be fast or slow depending on the scale of your game. And then a boost factor of four. So we'll travel at 40 when we're holding the boost kit. The next thing we're gonna set up is the fly camera component. This is just a marker struct telling Bevy which transform is the camera so that it can move only that transform when we are pressing the appropriate keys. This shows off a new feature in Bevy 0.15, which is required components. Required components are what replaces bundles in 0.15 allowing us to specify that we need to have camera settings on any entity that has a fly camera in order for it to function correctly. If we don't directly provide these settings, maybe we'll insert the default settings instead. Okay, now moving on to our player move system. This system requires three parameters, a query to get access to the transform and settings of our camera, which is done by requesting mutable access to the transform, camera settings, and then filtering with fly camera. This means that only the fly camera transform and settings will be collected. Next, we'll need the button input resource so that we can check what keys are being pressed. And then we need time so that we can access delta time and make our character move at a constant speed regardless of frame rate. The first thing we do is iterate through all the fly cameras, allowing us to have more than one fly camera in a scene with different settings. Then we initialize that delta at zero so the player won't be moving if they aren't pressing any keys. Add one to the Z if they're pressing forward. Subtract one if they're pressing back. Go negative X for left positive X for right. This is to do with the coordinate system that Bevy uses. We then get the camera's forward direction. This is the direction in front of the camera relative to its rotation. We then set the Y to zero so that you always move on the Z X plane. And so looking up will not cause you to move up. This is personal preference for you could make a no clip style fly cam where the camera moves directly forward no matter what, meaning looking up will allow you to move up and looking down will allow you to move down. I personally don't like this style of fly camera, so I set the Y to zero and then renormalize so our forward and right speeds don't get affected by how much we're looking up. We then repeat this process for the right direction. Finally, we calculate the delta's Y, so if the player is pressing up, we add to the Y and down we subtract. Finally, we multiply the delta by the speed boost factor if the speed boost key is being pressed. Next, we need to calculate the amount of movement to move the character this frame. So we take the forward and we multiply that by the Z delta. We take the right and multiply that by the X delta. And finally, we take just a standard Y vector and multiply that by the delta Y. We then multiply this entire vector by the delta time in order to scale our time down to a single frame instead of a whole second. And then multiply by 
the speed of our camera. Finally, it's important to check to see if this value is NAND, since when we normalize forward or right, it's possible for that value to be NAND, since we have set Y to zero, and this can result in invalid normalization cases, such as a vector of all zeros, if the player is looking directly up or directly down. And then if it is not NAND, we add the currently calculated next position to our current camera translation. This will allow our camera to move around. Next, we need to add rotation. Rotation works very similar, where we need to get access to our player's transform and settings, as well as the input. But this time, the input is mouse motion, which is an event that Bevy will fire every time the mouse moves. I believe this is every pixel. The other thing we need access to is the primary window. This is used in order to make the mouse sensitivity the same on the Y and X axis. If you don't do this, because the screen is wider than it is tall, the player's sensitivity will be different depending on which direction they're moving the mouse. We calculate our delta. This is done by iterating through all of the inputs in the mouse motion event, and then summing the delta in each of these motions. We then get access to the primary window. I'm doing this by get single, because it is possible that the primary window has not yet been initialized the first time the system runs. We then check to see if the cursor is not locked. If the cursor isn't locked, we return early since this means that the player probably does not want to be rotating the camera around since the mouse is not locked at the center of the screen. We then iterate through each transform and its settings. The first thing we need to do on each transform is calculate what its current yaw and pitch is. Yaw being left and right, pitch being up and down. This is done by going transform.rotation to Ulian, which is the standard notation that most people will understand angles in, as opposed to a quaternion, which is how Bevy actually represents this information. This will allow us to more easily manipulate the yaw and pitch in an intuitive way. This function takes an Euler rot enum that determines which order the outcoming axes will be in. In this case, we want y for yaw and x for pitch, and then we don't need to worry about the roll because you don't want a fly camera rolling. Next, we need the window scale. This is the minimum of the height and the width so that the value is the same for both. Next, we update our pitch. This is done by taking our delta y, multiplying it by a mouse sensitivity to make it a small number, remultiplying by a window scale, which will make it a larger value in degrees. Then we have to convert to radians since this is the format that Bevy uses. It is also possible to skip this step by making our mouse sensitivity even smaller and therefore not needing to convert back to radian since the value will be smaller to begin with. Then we clamp our pitch between negative half pi and positive half pi. This prevents the player from being able to do 360s with the camera since as soon as they pass the halfway point, the camera will be inverted and they will just flick back and forth between looking directly up and looking directly down. If we clamp between negative and positive half pi, it is no longer possible to look past directly up or directly down resulting in this flicker going away. Now we update our yaw. This is done by taking our delta x multiplying by mouse sensitivity and window scale and converting to radians. And finally, we update the camera's rotation. This is done by calculating the quaternion angle for the Y axis using our yaw, and then the X axis using our pitch and multiplying these two values together. The order of this multiplication is important because if you multiply by the pitch and then the yaw, this can introduce roll to the camera. Since you will pitch up and then yaw around the new pitch angle, this results in a rolling action because the camera twists around its axes, which in this case is no longer aligned with the plane the player is looking down. Instead, we want to yaw around the up axes and then pitch up so that the camera moves how we would expect it to move. When we get to actually compiling and showing off this code, I'll show what happens when we invert the yaw and pitch. Next, we have three functions related to the cursor. One of these I'm not directly using since it is not necessarily always the case that we want to release the cursor at a specific point, but this sets the grab mode to none and the visibility to true. Then I have grab cursor, which is run when the game first starts up in order to initialize the cursor locked. This is this sets the grab mode to locked, which should lock the cursor to the center of the screen. We then hide the cursor so that it is not visible in the center of the screen. One final one is cursor toggle. This is more complicated since it takes in camera settings and user input and checks to see if the user has pressed the camera toggle key before it goes through and checks the primary window to work out what state window is currently in. If the window is currently unlocked, it will then lock it. If the window is currently locked, it will unlock it. And finally, we need to make the camera plugin. In this case, because the fly camera is just a unit struct, I'm using this as the same struct as the plugin. This is not entirely necessary and it's just done for neatness here. 
The important thing here is to put the systems in the correct schedule and put them in the correct ordering. So the first thing you wanna do is have your cursor grab in startup this will mean that when the game starts up the cursor is grabbed you could also do this on things like scene transitions like when exiting the main menu or starting play grab the cursor and for example in something like minecraft you'd use cursor release whenever the inventory is opened and cursor grab when the inventory is closed next in update we want to have cursor toggle this will cause the cursor to toggle every time the game is updated and finally we're adding the player look and player move together in tuple and then calling chain on that this results in Bevy inserting them in that specific order so that player look will happen before player move. This isn't entirely necessary because it is unlikely that someone will notice a single frame lag in their looking versus their moving. But this guarantees a slight bit more repeatability on lower frame rates where the player's look will happen and then they will move in the direction that they are now looking as opposed to picking an arbitrary one to run first resulting in a potentially stuttery look as the player may move the direction they were previously looking before updating their look. Again, this is only relevant if the frame rate is particularly low that the player can actually notice a difference between when they're moving and when they're looking. And finally, this is what our flight camera is like in game. As you can see, I can move around and look as I like. And as promised, this is what happens when you put the pitch and the yaw in the wrong direction. <laughs> Multiplying them in the wrong order results in the camera apparently having a stabilizing effect as when we extract them later, they reset values. And when we move the mouse, we <laughs> result in a rolling motion as I move left and right, if I move up at all, I roll rather than pitching, which is very bizarre. And, uh, you know, that's why you don't do that. I just want to quickly go over what I've got planned next for Zero to Game before I go on to thanking my Kofi supporter. So the next video will probably be updating the fly camera to using something like Leafwing Input Manager so that you can have custom uh keyboard inputs and also have controller inputs mapped on top of motion so that, like, uh, you can have like an actual camera in your game rather than something like this where it's more of a debug camera. And then the next sort of topic that will be covered is procedural terrain generation, which will be showing you how to make the random generated terrain that you saw at the last section of this video. And I also have plans of showing you how once you've got the leaf wing set up and working to make a key binding menu that lets you ask the player to press a key or controller input and then bind that to a specific action so that the player can, can rebind their game bindings and you can sort of have like a more customizable game. If any of that sounds interesting to you, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss future episodes of Zero to Game. And I put a lot of effort into editing animations for this video, so it would be really appreciated if you could share this video with people, even outside of Bevy, because it does take a lot of time to do animations, and a lot of the time I just stick to slideshows, but I've decided to at least do one episode where I am actually going to animate most of it. So a share would be much appreciated, and I will see you in future episodes. As always, thank you to my Kofi supporter for helping make these episodes and funding the channel. I also have YouTube memberships enabled if anyone wants to do that in order to get cool emojis for my live streams. Again, the, the support is much appreciated and I will see you all in the next episode.